Hello everyone. I wanted to talk about some ideas that are presented very early in intermediate algebra books about uh, square roots that don't get treated very well, I don't think, and cause a lot of student confusion. This idea is called the principal square root. And I almost think that to remove ambiguity, it ought to be called the principal positive square root. And you'll see why that is in a second. Okay, what I want to do here is talk about um, and work with some numbers that you're very familiar with. For example, you know that 2 times 2 is equal to 4. Similarly, you know that negative 2 times negative 2 is equal to 4. Now, this is an interesting, interesting situation because if we <coughs> are after the square root of 4, well, the, a number that times itself, that gives, it, gives 4, could be 2. That certainly works, but it also could be negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. It's, it's positive 4. So basically there's some ambiguity here and we need to uh, come up with some rule for uh, handling this. And so the rule that is used in algebra textbooks is that when you have a square root or a fourth root or any even root, you're always talking, we're always talking about the principal square root, or as, I, or as I like to call it, the principal positive square root. We're always talking about it generating a pos the positive root and not the negative root. If you want to see the negative root, you have to put a sign out in front of that square root, like this, and that will generate the negative 2 square root. Now, if you want to show both of them at the same time, you put a, a plus minus out in front of the square root. So. The main takeaway idea here, though, is this one, is that when you see a square root or a fourth root or any even root without a sign out in front, it has got to generate, on the right-hand side, a positive or zero number. It can never be negative. And just to, to take this uh, idea one step further, I want to show that this doesn't apply. This idea is don't apply to uh, cube roots or fifth roots or any odd roots. There is no ambiguity. If you take three twos you and multiply them together, you get eight. If you take, like we did in the other situation, we try the negative side of that. We take three negative twos, you get a negative eight. There's no ambiguity here. Positive two cubed gives you eight. Negative two cubed gives you negative eight. That means the cube root of eight no ambiguity, it has to be 2. And the cube root of negative 8, no ambiguity, it has to be negative 2. So even roots and odd roots are different. And because of this, when we have problems like in the uh, typical chapter problems, we have to be able to adjust our thinking to take these two ideas into account. Let me show you something here. This is a very typical problem that would appear in any algebra textbook dealing with uh, roots, and they ask us to simplify this. And you have seen some of my notes and thinking where I say that, uh, that essentially the uh, roots and powers, roots and exponents are inverses of each other and undo each other. And you can almost think of this as a canceling problem. The square root cancels the square, and we're left with simply x. And if you were to write this as your answer, though, and check in the back of the book, you would be wrong. And I want to show you why that's so. What I want to do here is, um, I want to suppose, you know, suppose I let x equal negative 1 in, in this situation. Now, remember, we began with this expression, and we simplified it to this expression. And those two expressions are equivalent expressions, and they should be true for all possible insertions. So if I let x equal negative 1, it ought to generate truth. And so let's try it. I'll let x equal negative 1 on both the left and the right hand side. Now at this point in time, you might be tempted to say this is true because the square root will undo the square and I'll have negative 1 is equal to negative 1. But there's nothing to stop us from doing this squaring process inside here first. That's certainly a legitimate move. And if I do that, and math always has to be consistent, so we have to take into account that if I do this squaring first, then what happens here, under the radical, I get a positive 1. And now, keep in mind this is the principal positive square root, and when I 
crunch that out, we have this situation, which is obviously not true. And the only way we can maintra maintain this to be true from top to bottom is if, on the right-hand side, I had enclosed that loan x with an absolute power of bars. That would have forced positiveness on the right-hand side. And keep in mind, we're talking about the principal positive square root on the left-hand side. And so this is the only way to maintain equivalent expressions. I need to show that right-hand side and absolute power bars. OK, so again, this would be the answer you'd see in the back of the book. I want to do one more problem, and slightly more complex, but same ideas. Simplify this square root. Now, you're looking at a trinomial, and in this class, and even in college algebra, whenever you see a trinomial, you're going to try and crack it. And this one will indeed crack as y plus 8 times y plus 8 which I've written in longhand here and in shorthand as an, with the exponent 2 here. And again, the square root undoes the square. And it's all very tempting to say that the, simplica the simplification of the left-hand side looks like that. But once again, this has to be true for all replacements of y. And so uh, suppose I let y equal negative 9. And if I do that, the left-hand side is going to look like this, and the right-hand side is going to look like this. And I went ahead and crunched this out. This is actually evaluates to 1. And so we end up with uh, uh, this situation right here, which is identical to where we were before with the simpler ex example. And so, you know, at this point in time, you're going to become very wise in this in no time. Since this is a principal positive square root, it can equal a negative number. And so this is not a true statement. In fact, these two are the same. And 1 does not equal negative 1. And the only way we can make these two equivalent is to have forced from the very beginning the right-hand side to reflect the fact that the left-hand side is the principal positive square root by inserting absolute power bars all the way down in this problem. And so that's where those absolute power bars are coming from in this answer. And that's why you're always going to see them in your textbook whenever you're having even roots. You won't see them for odd roots. And so this, in fact, is the correct answer that will appear, should appear in the back of your book. OK, so it's all about the principal positive square root. I hope that helps explain it. It's not an easy idea to explain or to wrap your head around. But once you get it, you get it good. Be talking to you soon.